Hey, don't get anxious, get prepared, and welcome to TCE TV. I guess what we should start calling this, where we are all about helping you make sure Monday mornings is awesome. And we thank you all so much for sending your, your um, emails and your information to us at our website, tcenow.com, as well as uh, to our email info at tcenow.com. You never know, we might just I do a show about something you find important in the in career and the business or in the life category. It's all about making Monday mornings awesome and exceeding our motto of don't get anxious, get prepared. So we welcome you to our program today. Today, we're going to have actually a talk about a topic that is very important to some of our viewers. In fact, um, the, the reason we're, we're, we're hitting this, the person asked a question and then someone else followed up with an email as they were having some struggles in the career and business market. And I thought, you know what, if one person has asked it, it might be just as important for another. So let's not keep the info just to ourselves. Let's share it out to others. So today I'm talking to my job seekers and my job changers who are in this community. Are you in that 50 or 45 year old category? Um, and if so, what has been your experience in the market? So we're going to dive right into that. So don't go anywhere. I'm going to be right back. Get your pen, get your paper, get your digital device. Hey, we keep it high tech and high touch. We'll be right back talking about, is it still a job seekers market for folks over 50? Shh, don't go anywhere. I'm Yeah, and that's what's up because there are real folks in this situation. I mean, everybody isn't, you know, a millennial, <laughs> right? There are other folks who are not millennials. So we want to make sure we include all of them. And, and the reason being, too, is just because there have been some folks that um, even though, you know, this is a great at the time that I'm taping this, it's an amazing market for people that are looking to move up or move out. And if you do decide to stay in place, you're also able to get yourself some great deals. So let's talk to the folks who are in that category um, of over 50. Again, no matter what platform you're watching this on, if you have a question or comment, please reach out to us um, by email uh, and to get uh, so we can know what's going on. So the questions that you're all asking about is the job seekers market. So let me just kind of hit the the thing in the head, like, what's the deal? Are there isms in the world? Is there ageism? Is there sexism? I mean, the isms have not disappeared just because we're doing things differently, right? So they are real and people's perceptions are real. And I want to add, not only is it the employer, I mean, because this is, this is people you're talking to, right? A business isn't just this concept. It's, it's fueled by people. And people have ideas or preconceived notions or perceptions. And we have them too. I'm pointing at you. I'm also pointing at me. We have them too. So let's deal with that, that yes, they're there. Now, are they supposed to impact the workplace or right to work or where you work? Of course not. In fact, we have policies and procedures and laws that say no, but people have perceptions. So what do we do to come back folks' perceptions. Like, what do we do to make this right? How do we, how do we get over this hurdle? Particularly for somebody that's, that's in that age group. I mean, you know, over 45. I mean, we're finding that even with some folks as 45 year olds. And even though this is a job seekers market, they're saying they're putting out resumes or putting out interviews or doing all the things we're supposed to do. And I mean, they're getting interviews, I should say, not putting out interviews, but they're doing all the things we're supposed to do, but yet they're not getting hired. And they're saying it's because of my age. It's because I have things on my resume that's showing I'm dated. It's because, you know, I've been doing something 20 years. So if I've been doing something 20 years, I can't possibly be 20. So th this is real. This, this is what's put people out there. So what do we do about it? How do we get the employer to see past the um, wisdom lines that some of us are getting? I just call them, you know, you earn them. How do we get employers to see past that? Here's one idea, one way. I mean, because like I said, isms are real. So, and I don't want to say, so what? I'm not saying, because I tell you, I say the same thing to my young people who will say, I'm not getting hired because I'm too young. People don't think we're have, I have enough experience. So what do we do for us, those of us who are more seasoned in our industry? I mean, I'm going to tell you, what, here's what employers have said to me. Let me put it this way, okay? Let me put it this way. I mean, training is the best way, the best way to hit a home run. I'm telling you, I'm going to, go, I'm going to use my sports analogies because y'all know I love me some sports. Is not only do you need to pick up the bat, 
but you need to hit it with a new skill, right? You got to do a skill. Some folks, I'm just going to, you know, whether again, everybody has perceptions. Some folks think that certain age groups, certain generations are not open to learning, uh, that they've, they felt that folks will come with this perception of this is how I've done it. And this is the way I'm going to do it. <laughs> and I ain't doing it no other way. Okay. Well, uh, no, we don't want that in our workplace culture. So is the, that the age or the, or is the, that the age and how you think the diversity of your thinking, you know, you can be, 85 years old, but do you, you know, but right here, where are you? Meaning that, are you willing to grasp new skills? Are you trainable still, even in your seasonness? You know, are you open to learning? What have we learned in this last 19 months during the uh, COVID pandemic that everybody had to become a forever learner? Every Everything you thought you knew just got shivoted. Everything you thought you could count on got changed. And the only way to stay real and relevant is to stay current. It's to stay current. So if you're a person of season, <laughs> right, what are you doing? What's demonstrated on your resume to show that you are current in your industry? I mean, every single industry, what we have learned, every single industry has technology and touch. They have both high tech and high touch. You folks have heard me say that all the time. It's not either or, or if this, then that it's equal. You got to have both. And I want you to be a rock star and not just your tech in terms of relation to what you do, right? In terms, in relation to what you, I do not know how to need to know how to fix a, um, a SpaceX rocket. They don't want me in the uh, mechanical line, right? They, they don't need me there. That's not where my skill set is, right? However, I need to be able to know how to watch it on YouTube, right? I need to be able, I mean, if I'm interested in it, you know, I got to be able to access, you know, and understand how to navigate and understand how to, practically, um, you know, enjoy it. Or if I'm someone that's selling it, I got to know how to sell it today in a tech, in a touch world. So this is what I'm saying. We have got to make sure that your skill sets are, are current and you should have that on your resume and yes, in your LinkedIn and yes, in your uh, technology, all the places that your brand digital and traditional are showcasing. You've got to showcase what you have, not your age. That, that's the short story of where I'm getting to. When people see you now, granted, remember in America, now in America, I, I love LinkedIn. I know your little picture is on LinkedIn. So make sure you're, you take the best picture. But in America, you submit your resume, right? You, hopefully you're working your networks and all that kind of good stuff. You submit this powerhouse resume or brand that's show, showcasing what you have, what you bring, your value, your, your integrity, your workmanship, your quality, your performance, your accomplishment, leadership. You've been seasoned in your field, then there should be some show up. There should be some leadership, some places where you have showed up and where you have stepped up. That that has to be there. Okay. And 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 folks want to see what you do in the green economy. Green economy, y'all. I mean, yeah, it's a green economy, okay? How you increase, okay, and how you get along. And the type of great decisions you make. So showcase what you have, not your age. I mean, if I'm 45, <clears throat> if I was 45, I'm just saying, whatever, that's another show. I don't need to have my high school <laughs> education date there. If I graduated 20, 25 years ago from college, I don't need to have my college date there. I need to have that. I've graduated. I've got my degrees. I've got the know-how, the know-how, the know-how, right, to do my job. Um, now certifications, new trainings professional development. Oh yeah. Well, that kind of good stuff should definitely be above my education somewhere current. So folks can know I'm on top of it in terms of the technologies I need to use for now. So, so you've got to showcase what you have and not your age. Most of you are showcasing what you did in the sixties. And I'm not saying <laughs> that's a bad thing. I mean, I don't know. Just depends on what you did in the sixties. If it's relevant for today, maybe that it works or the seventies or the eighties or the nineties, right? I keep Hard for me to think that 2000 was 21 years ago, but it was, okay? 
Now, let me share the, um, let me get, not that one. Let me see if there's another one I want to share. So, um, so training is always the best way, but the key of the matter is too, in your job search. I mean, culture, I, we did, I did a study. Well, I read a study that was done about the hiring hurdles that managers are, sa- are sharing with us. And it's quite fascinating. It was actually done by Robert Half. You could Google it. I'm sure I'm going to do a YouTube about it maybe another time, but you know, it was, it was talking about the importance of their company culture. They want the right talent and finding the right talent is tough because it's yes, skills matter and, and, and abilities matter. Got to be able to do the job, but you also got to be able to cope with the job and you got to be able to keep the job and do you fit into corporate culture? And yes, there are corporate cultures. Yes, there are just like you have a culture in your home. Okay. You have expectations and norms and, and, uh, atmosphere in your home. Well, so doesn't the business world. Okay. So for example, let me just give you a, for example, cause I think that helps a little bit in my space, career engineer, I, when we've had the offline events and things of that nature, you know, we're having networking. Of course, we haven't done it in almost two years now due to the pandemic at the time of this uh, recording, but I, I have an aversion towards suits and ties. I just, I do not, I'm not that person, right? When you come to the event, I'm just, please take off that tie. Please, I like, don't even wear a suit. It's just, it's not me. It's not our corporate culture. We have a reason for it. And those that understand and fit into our culture understand what we're looking for. We want to get beyond the suit. We want to get behind, beyond the tie. We want to know, we want to meet the person. So not that you'll be kicked out, but we will totally ask you to please disrobe in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's part of our culture. It's part of our deal. We have a do not hustle zone. It's part of our culture. It's part of our deal. Not everyone is all about, about that. They'll, oh no, I want to get, well then you don't need to be here and that's okay. So we do live with people that fit our culture. So companies do the same thing. And what's, what's in the corporate culture? I mean, every company has its own way of doing their thing. I mean, maybe they're civic minded. Maybe they're, maybe it's like a, and I want to just use some things that's going to probably highlight my age, but you know, if the MTV world is looking for someone to do what I do, I'm probably not the right fit. I am a, I am, you know, I'm, I'm not what they're looking for and I'm okay with it. I would not send my credentials to the MTV world. Not, not me. Now, I think I'm pretty cool. Don't get me wrong, but I'm sure there's a 20 something that totally gets it and fits the culture has different, you know, aesthetics and all of that. And that's cool. That's not where I fit, but there is a space where I fit where people will watch folks like me. And it's up to me as job seekers, particularly those of us who are beyond 45 to do definitely a strategy in our job search to find, to find those places and spaces. They exist and there are more of them than what used to be. And the way you engage is different, right? So part of even the process of reaching out has changed and technology is definitely into it. So again, I was going to leave that, that up there that you got to showcase what you have. You you really do. It's not about how long or how older you are. It's about what you can do with it really. Um, And that's important, but here's, and this is going to be a long, a long banner here, but from the results of this particular report, and I really uh, particular people over 50 definitely should read it because I think it's a great report, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in depth another time. But how interesting that 80, in this in their survey, that 87% of hiring managers said hires who are over 45 were good or better, right? We're good or better than their younger workers. So boom, there it is, right? Boom, there it is. So how interesting that if you can get past the hurdles, Okay, your perceptions and theirs, because it's like you're perceiving that you're not getting hired because of your age. It's a perception. It may not be true. It might be you didn't have skills. It might be you didn't present the way they they want you to present. It could be you're just not qualified. I mean, I know that's a hard ouch, but it happens. You're not the one they want. You know, it just it is. It happens. Right. However, make sure that you're doing all this necessary and sufficient so that you can make sure that you can get past those hurdles. And those are the things that I covered. I'm going to hit them again really quickly, but I want to also showcase this. I mean, I'm going to, the link should be in the description here, but if not, hit it up at generation.org slash mid-career. It's a pretty cool survey. And this organization tends to write about those things, right? And just 
what more that folks are looking for and what hurdles or how you can get over it. But as your career engineer, I'm sharing with you what you need to do. And what is it that we need to do is simply the deal. Training to me is the best way to hit a home run. Yes, you've got experience and it should be there. Performance should be there. Accomplishment should be there. Your leadership should be there. But how current are you? How open are you to learning something new? We need your wisdom. Lord knows we need it in the job world today, but we also don't need that. I know that's not how it's done. I've always done it this way and that's just the way it is. We That doesn't work. Don't work anymore. Be open to learning. And that's for all of us, but definitely for us, us who our brand might look a little dated because we're only showing our time served. We're not showing what we can do. Very different perspective, actually. So listen, so what does that mean for you? Again, as I sit here or stand here, it is definitely a market for employees and workers. This is your, I can't get over how much I'm saying. This is definitely your moment. This is your moment. So seize it, but don't get out there with the same old stuff. No pun intended. Make sure your brand is dynamite. I mean, just fantastic, like average, like, wow, like all, I will find any other adjective I could, but it's going to be a plus, plus, plus. I'm all that I'm doing the a plus plus, right. And you can then get to where you need to go. I mean, tell you, get over these hurdles and it may, and it's going to take maybe more than one application. Okay. Don't oh, I apply to one job. They said, no, that's it. No, you have to keep going. In fact, on my IG today, I shared the importance of grit, mojo, and moxie. I mean, you got to have some fire in your belly if you want to if you want to win this game. You can't just do one thing and sit down because they said no. You got to step up again and do it again, like repeat. Right? That's what you have to do. And that's what that's what winners do. I'm just saying, be a winner. You know, be a winner no matter what. So, but you've got this. This is this is like such a time for folks to they are in the driver's seat. And this may not. I mean, I know, I know it will not last. See, my wisdom. And my age says this will not last because nothing lasts forever. That's wisdom. So while it's here, get with it. Be a part of it. Okay. That's what's important. So listen, we want to make sure you have a fantastic week. Um, and remember, as we shared earlier, you can find us everywhere all over the internet. I mean, we're everywhere. I mean, but you can definitely hit, up, hit us up at tcenow.com. Like I said, you can send me a contact. You can email us. You can do all kinds of stuff. And of course, all of our socials are there as well. So I want you to have a fantastic week. Make it work. Uh, Watch this as often as you can, particularly if you're one of them 45 and ups. (laughs) Get real. Stay current. That's all I want you to do. You've got this. You're in it to win it. And I'm with you. So thank you so much for tuning in. You all be blessed. Have a wonderful week. And we will chat next time. Remember, don't get anxious. Always get prepared. Thank you.